university graduates holding degrees and they came and went through this mm. of training in <laughs> vocational courses. Mm. We had um, seven of them who had NCE, you know. So uh, when we asked them why, they said it was better for them to take this course and become self-employed rather than sit at home after and university have education no employment. and have no employment at all. Mm. So uh, the door is open. So you are impl you, you're saying that uh, this training is accredited by City and Guilds London? The first examination by City and Guilds London will be in December this year. Okay. Lots of them so far have been examined by the Ministry of Labour, uh, three tests three, two, and one. That's what we've had to this point. But from December this year, we will begin to make our students go through the City and Guild examinations. So that means they will be conforming to it's global best Practice. practices. Okay, and you've been writing, you say, yeah. on issues in the country, issues. How would you describe the state of the nation at this time? <sighs> Pathetic. I know things could be better, but unfortunately, we are in this mess. Um, politically, uh, religiously, um, it's like everything has gone upside down. And it's very sad. Given the resources we are given in this country, human resources, material resources, we also have done much better. Okay, so that. when you, you were um, uh, not just a member of the Christian Association of Nigeria, you were also a uh, former president of CAN. Yes. When you look at the controversy that uh, Pastor Richard Jaffa has been dragged or sucked into, which is rather unfortunate for CAN, how do you feel and what do you say about things like that, Richard? I felt very sad very sad indeed. Um, of course, I don't have all the facts um, of the situation, but um, I hope it's not true that it had anything to do with that unfortunate incident. I pray it doesn't have anything to do with it. But if it does, then <laughs> let's leave it. <laughs> <laughs> let, let the law fix some effect. Mm -hmm. Let the laws of the land take its effect. But okay. I pray it doesn't have hand in, in, the, in, this, in this ugly incident. Yeah. But when, when you hear that Nigeria is taking $9.3 million, uh, 9 .3 million uh, in an aircraft, whether the owner of the aircraft was aware or not, if they've taken that kind of thing out of the country as a Nigerian, forget about being former president of Khan or even being a Christian, let's assume anybody could have owned that aircraft and it's being used just to traffic it. How do you feel? I feel very bad. Because for me, it's, a, it's another manifestation of the rottenness of Nigerian society. Um, we talk about corruption every day in this country. And this is just another manifestation of the corruptness in this country. So it could have been anybody, like you said. It could have been anybody. And your thoughts on the Chibok girls? <laughs> um, that's a much more complex situation much more complex and difficult matter because that point you've just raised is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, those who kidnap them have their clear agenda. They know what they want. And they've done that, they've done the kidnapping of these girls to let Nigerians and the world know that they meant business. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a much more complex uh, matter to tackle in the few minutes we have here. Okay, Your Eminence, um, we have very little time left and we'll have to close now, but um, a lot of us are very passionate about young Nigerians and the few, because they are the future of this country. Yeah. What will be your final word to them, primarily concerning your initiative and secondarily concerning how they manifest and help in the formation of the future of this country? One, I would want to say that Nigerian youths um, should no longer think of themselves as people who are helpless, who are hopeless. I think, and I know from experience, that the sky is their limit, as they say. The whole future, the whole of the future is right there before them. And so they need to take their own destiny in their own hands and begin to have a new mindset, a new, a new orientation that they too can do it that they too can become useful citizens of this country. And to do that, they need to acquire skills that will enable them to 
earn their own decent living. Um, the era of looking for a white collar job is over for good in our country. So I appeal to our young people to think of what they can do with their own hands. I mean, as the holy book will say, he who does not walk should not eat. <laughs> so, yes. so our young people should take this very seriously and you know, begin to take pride in what you call dignity of labor. Um, they are less the future for our young people. And once they are able to begin to fare for themselves, then it will have a ripple effect on society, on their family first, then on the society in general. Okay, thank you very much, Your Eminence. Uh, we've been speaking with uh, the former Anglican primate of the Church of Nigeria, former Archbishop of Province 3, Abuja Province, and also former President of the Christian Association of Nigeria, and now the one who has brought this uh, fantastic initiative together, Peter Akinola Foundation Youth Center. We thank you very much for being on Channel's Television Sunrise this Saturday morning. Thank you very much indeed. We'll Thank be you. very delighted to have you again, Once but on um, this time we'll be talking about national issues and not the foundation. And we'll have more time to talk. <laughs> more time, yeah, that's right. Thank it's you very much. So day. Sunrise, Thank we'll you. take a short break. When we come back, another conversation awaits you. So join us again. <laughs>